Hi friends, my name's Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. Slap face hit Shudder this week. The creative horror thriller deals with some pretty heavy subject matter in a way that seems almost too easily digestible. The film is so straightforward that it may not give the viewers enough to sink their teeth into. The movie is written and directed by Jeremiah Kipp, who is no stranger to the horror genre. He has an extensive library of shorts and a few features that skew towards horror and also sci-fi monster themes. And Slapface is no different. Although the film is rooted in trauma, exploring the suppressed emotions of men, or in this case, boys. The film also has a law or an entity that works as a metaphor for this misplaced anger. Slapface is a troubling and violent story about two brothers that are in way over their heads. Unable to process their emotions after the tragic death of their parents, they act out. Younger brother Lucas is constantly getting in trouble, which is a cry for attention, while older brother Tom drinks as a way to escape his emotions and reality. And as we hopefully all know by now, that doesn't really work. Tom is now the guardian of Lucas, but he refuses to become the parental figure. The boys both need help in their own way, but are left to their own vices as we watch them struggle without any hope. That is, until Lucas ups the stakes when he becomes acquainted with a mysterious entity connected to local law. Lucas is the lead and the focus of the film, but what is interesting is the approach to the way his character is written. Usually with this kind of setup, up with the death of a parent, it's a way to build empathy or sympathy for the character. It's also usually a way for them to have something that they must overcome to let go of the past. But Lucas is anything but the quiet, hopeless type. And we see the real consequences of what happens when children are neglected and encouraged to suppress their emotions and softer side. Instead, he is the problem child, the kid in school, which I have to say it, you would probably perceive as being annoying, acting out loud and cunning. It's the mask we usually see outside of the films, a cry for help. It actually made me think about the film Antlers and how coincidentally, both of the lead characters are called Lucas and they're both boys drowning in these really tough situations. But it's very interesting how differently they're portrayed. If you've seen Antlers, the character Lucas is very shy and timid and mysterious. While this Lucas is anything but quiet, it's really interesting to see the difference. And I do think in Slapface, this is more realistic. Although of course, everyone deals with things in their own way. Although the film does take a unique approach that falls more in line with a non-romanticized version of events, it can't help but slip up with some stereotypes. That being the cop in the town who is constantly warning Tom of his brother's trouble. Somehow there's always a cop around to show the depth of trouble that someone is getting into, lay down the foundations of a deeper backstory or the history of the family in the town, in this case, the cop's connection to the parents. But although he's always in their business, he's not concerned at all about these two boys who live alone and are constantly screaming out for help. But don't worry, there is a voice of reason and that comes from Anna. Anna is played by Leib Bearer, who you may recognize from ICU or Sneaky Pete. Anna becomes involved in the household and she is very quick to see that something is not right with the duo. And particularly Lucas, who has just met his new friend and is starting to withdraw. With everything out on the table in this film, the only real mystery is the entity. And although we put it together pretty Pretty fast, Slapface relies on its darkness to hide the details and features of this entity throughout the film. And it really will rely on the viewer depending on what camp you are from. Do you like to see all of the nitty gritty details? Do you like to get up there and see the entity in plain daylight? Or do you think less is more, kind of Blair Witch style? Personally, I differ film to film. I think it's all about the approach. But when I was watching this film, I couldn't help but feel like I was sliding into a Goosebumps tale when the details became clear. I went from watching this incredibly violent film to a Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. They do rely heavily on practical effects, which I really admire, but they also tie in some CGI. But neither of those were the issue for me. It was the loss of the unique feeling. This looks like a very stereotypical entity and I can't wait to hear your thoughts on that. So once you've seen the film, 
please let me know what you thought of the look because <laughs> speechless <laughs> to me slap face feels like found meets darkness falls meets the masters of horror episode jennifer it's got that real early 2000s look to it and the straightforward nature of the film along with the reveal allows for little speculation but because of the more realistic approach to Lucas and what would usually be a timid lead, it did keep me intrigued with his journey. It's an independent film that surprises its viewers with a raw violence that at times feels too close to comfort, but then it's counterbalanced by its blanket metaphor, which seems a little bit on the nose. Stylization, the film feels slightly gritty, but the sound design is what brings most of the tone of dread. There's constant stirring, uncomfortable music, juxtaposed with delicate piano. But I wouldn't by any stretch call it an aesthetically pleasing film. The emphasis is on the characters and the story. Slapface isn't a bad film. In fact, it highlighted a lot of what I like about independent films. It brought something unique and raw to the table, but unfortunately it felt simplified, leaving not a lot of room for interpretation or discussion. Slapface, which that name they do explain it, don't worry, and it's kind of more disturbing than you could ever think. They explained it in one of the first scenes, so get ready for that. Can't wait to read the comments about that one. It's now streaming on Shudder in most countries. I'm gonna give the film a six out of 10. I wanted to love it, as I always do, uh, but it just didn't have that special oomph for me and everything that was unique about it, I felt kind of fell to the wayside when it went through a really obvious blanket metaphor, which I keep saying, but I don't wanna to say too much. I'm very interested to see your comments on this one though, so please leave them below because I'm, yeah, I'm very interested to see the reactions. For originality, I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. I did toy back and forth with giving it a five, but I did feel like it had a different feeling to it, if anything, bringing that 2000s vibe into 2022 is very interesting. And for scare, I'm gonna give it a five out of 10. I don't think it's a scary film at all, but violence. There's some violence in this film, which is incredibly understated uh, for how intense it is. Uh, and I guess when you see the Anna character come in, she kind of sees it for what it is and it's it's really shocking that it's so normalized. Um, but my five isn't really just for that. There's actually some animal abuse in the movie. So just be aware of that. Uh, let me know what you thought about Slap Face down below. My name is Emma. I do two videos every single week talking about horror movies, talking about thrillers and giving you a lot to put on your to watch list. I do recommend checking this one out if you have Shudder. Um, and again, if it sounds like something you'd like. If it doesn't, I totally understand. It's not for everyone, like all movies. But if you'd like to subscribe, I'd love to have you along. There's so many movies coming out this month. So I'm very excited to chat with you about them all and hopefully give you some good recommendations. Until next time, stay safe and stay spooky. Bye friends.